represents the future of naval warfare, combining cutting-edge technology, automation, and raw power into one of the most expensive and capable ships ever commissioned by the United States Navy. Let us begin with its sheer presence. The USS Gerald R. Ford is massive. It stretches over 1,100 feet long and displaces more than 100,000 tons. That is a full city block of steel and technology moving through the oceans with a nuclear-powered heart. It's not just a ship it's a mobile airbase, capable of projecting American power anywhere in the world. Commissioned in July 2017, the USS Gerald R. Ford is the lead ship of a new class of aircraft carriers that will eventually replace the aging Nimitz-class carriers. It's named after the 38th President of the United States, Gerald R. Ford, who served in the Navy during World War II. At the heart of this beast are two A-1B nuclear reactors. These reactors are not only more powerful than those on the Nimitz class, but also more efficient, producing around 250% more electricity. This allows the ship to power more advanced systems, such as electromagnetic catapults and high-tech radar arrays, without requiring additional generators or fuel. One of the most revolutionary features on board is the Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System, or EMILS. Unlike traditional steam catapults, EMILS uses electric power to launch aircraft more smoothly and with less wear and tear on the planes. It also allows for more launches in a shorter amount of time, improving the carrier's combat readiness and tempo. Then there's the Advanced Arresting Gear, or AAG, used to recover aircraft. Like EMILS, this system replaces older hydraulic technology with electric motors and digital controls, enabling safer and more reliable landings especially for lighter unmanned aircraft, which are becoming more common in modern naval aviation. In terms of aircraft, the USS Gerald R. Ford can carry over 75 planes, including the F-A-18 Super Hornet, the EA-18G Growler, the E-2D Hawkeye, and the emerging F-35C Lightning II. In the future, it's expected to support unmanned aerial vehicles and other next-generation platforms, making it highly flexible for any mission type whether it's air superiority, surveillance, or long-range strike missions. The Ford also has a redesigned flight deck, larger and more open than its predecessors. With improved deck flow and aircraft elevators that move planes and weapons faster, it increases sortie generation rates by up to 33%. That means the carrier can launch more missions per day than any other ship in history. But it's not just about launching planes. The USS Gerald R. Ford is also equipped with some of the most advanced defensive systems ever placed on a carrier. This includes the RIM-116 Rolling Airframe Missile System, the Phalanx CIWS for close-in threats, and the RIM-162 Evolved Sea Sparrow Missile for medium-range defense. It's protected from all sides above, below, and across the sea. The ship's radar system, the Dual Band Radar DBR, combines both X-band and S-band radars to track thousands of targets simultaneously. It's a digital leap forward that provides unprecedented situational awareness. Whether it's an incoming aircraft, missile, or surface ship, the Ford sees it coming. Automation is another key strength of the Ford-class carriers. Despite being larger and more capable, the USS Gerald R. Ford requires fewer crew members than the Nimitz class about 600 fewer sailors. This not only saves money over the life of the ship but also creates more space and efficiency on board. Maintenance tasks are streamlined, damage control systems are more responsive, and living conditions for sailors are significantly improved. Now let us talk cost. The USS Gerald R. Ford is the most expensive warship ever built, with a total cost exceeding $13 billion. That is not including the air wing or operational expenses. But when you consider its capabilities and its projected lifespan of over 50 years, 
the investment is aimed at long-term dominance of the seas. Its missions vary widely, from power projection, deterrence, and humanitarian assistance to launching strikes in conflict zones and maintaining maritime freedom. Whether it's sailing through the South China Sea or supporting NATO operations in the Atlantic, the Gerald R. Ford is a tool of both peace and deterrence. There have been challenges, of course. Delays, cost overruns, and technical issues especially with EMILS and AAG have slowed down its deployment. But in recent years, those problems have been systematically addressed, and the carrier has begun full operational testing with great success. The Ford symbolizes not just American naval superiority, but also the future of warfare. With rapid changes in drone technology, hypersonic weapons, and cyber warfare, carriers like the Gerald R. Ford are being built with adaptability in mind. Its open architecture systems allow for easy upgrades as new threats emerge over the next half century. What does this mean globally simply put, when the USS Gerald R. Ford enters a region, it sends a message. It tells allies that the US is present and ready. It tells adversaries that any aggression will be met with unmatched aerial and naval force. With additional ships in the Ford class already under construction, including the USS John F. Kennedy CVN-79 and the USS Enterprise CVN-80, we are looking at a new era of carrier dominance. These ships will form the backbone of the US Navy well into the 21st century. In conclusion, the USS Gerald R. Ford is not just a ship it's a symbol of technological evolution, military might, and global influence. It's the result of decades of planning, billions in investment, and the work of thousands of engineers, sailors, and defense experts. Whether it's for combat missions or peacekeeping efforts, the Ford will be at the center of American naval operations for generations to come. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this in-depth look at the world's most powerful aircraft carrier, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you never miss a new upload. Drop your thoughts in the comments below do you think carriers like the Ford are still the future of naval warfare, or will emerging tech redefine naval strategy?